Hi there nature nerds, welcome to Nerding for Nature. I am Carly. So today we're going to be making cordage from hemp dogbane or Apocynum cannabinum. Uh, whoa! <laughs> Here in British Columbia, hemp dogbane was probably the most important plant fiber to the indigenous people. I'm going to be using the methods outlined in Nancy Turner's plant technology of the first peoples in British Columbia, which is actually quite different from a lot of the resources I found online. The only resource I found online of, of a similar method is some Paiute women in Nevada. Um, there's a video, I'll put the link in the description. That's a great video to look for if you're looking for experts. If you are not new to the channel, you probably know that uh, a lot of the times when I do these kind of videos, it's um, experimentation for me so you get to learn from my mistakes. So let's talk a little bit about IDing this wonderful plant. It likes to grow in open area, open moist areas so along stream banks um, you'll notice I'm right in front of a river but also roadsides, forest edges, places like that. Um, it's up to one meter tall. Leaves are five to eleven centimeters long, lance shaped with fairly strong veins and um, they grow um, in an opposite pattern along the stem. It also has reddish stems in it'll have white or green flowers that it grow in bunches at the top and you'll have a little bit of branching at the top. So another important um, feature especially if you're harvesting in the winter is the seed pods which are um, long and skinny. None of these have actually gone to seeds so I, I can't um, I can't show you. In the summer and spring they'll have a milky sap. Dogbane is poisonous to livestock and dogs I guess and humans um, and I, I believe that poison is contained within the milky sap which will drop out of the the stems in the winter and go into the rhizome. I'm not 100% about it not being poisonous uh, this time of year so I'm not going to eat it or let my child eat it or my cat. Western indigenous method um, goes and harvests, harvests these plants in the fall just as the leaves are turning color. Probably notice it is not early fall. There is snow on the ground and all the leaves are gone. So I missed my window. A lot of other places I've seen online people have harvested these later in the winter or the spring and I think the idea is there that the plant has dried out and the fibers have actually started to separate. My camera is actually doing a great job of not showing how it's getting dark so I'm just going to harvest um, some canes and then head inside. Some of these are from last year so I want to be taking the ones from this year. On the older ones uh, the fibers have already started to break down. I'm just going to trim it off at the branchy part. Boom, easy. Let's go inside. Okay, Nancy Turner said to split these split these guys by uh, squishing them over a branch. And if by that she means kitchen table and a coffee mug, I am following the directions perfectly. First thing Nancy said was to split it, but to keep the whole thing intact. So we're going to be working with the whole stem, which is different from other places I've seen where they've ported them. Well, they're in two, but um, I think if I still make all of it into rope at once. So the next step is going to be to break the inside woody part off. Come a little closer. I found in all of my one day of experience that um, instead of just pulling it off like this, which um, ends up taking away a bunch of fibers, pull like that, and that, and then I don't lose all my fibers. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, keep on doing this. You don't need to watch me. That would be boring. Okay, so this is but one stem's worth of fibers in this hand and one stem's worth of fibers in this hand. So I'm going to start processing one and then I'm going to splice them together. So if you happen to be a person who is experienced with making cordage, you might be expecting me to do the double twist, but I'm not going to do that. I am 
going to do what Nancy Turner says to do. And Nancy says to twist, to rub them with wet hands along a bare thigh or some buckskin. Um, I don't have buckskin and I'm not going to take off my pants, so I'm just going to use my jeans. So I'm starting with the fiber from the bottom stem, so that would be the end with the most fiber in it. And I'm just taking my wet hand and twisting it. And you can see so far it um, looks like some cordage. It's not breaking. Woohoo! So I'm just going to keep going until I get about half of this length twisted and then I'll come back for the splice. Okay, so in this bundle, I'm just going to make a V with these ones, so just split them into two. And then make a V with these ones um, at the bigger end, so that would be the end that was the bottom of the stem. And then we join the Vs together. And get back to twisting. So it was looking great until I had to splice. And then it all got uh, mangy looking. I say we go put this to the test. Can you hold this for a second? You got it? Mm -hmm. You got it tight? You got it real tight? Ow. Hear that, folks? He says, ow. It ain't pretty, but it at least hold something. Huh. Uh, that would be the splice. Okay, so I have all of these so I can experiment a little bit more. Maybe with the more conventional uh, double twist method. And also, peel off this outer layer with a knife first. And see what kind of fibers that creates. Good morning. I thought I'd share with you what I've been working on for the last couple days. So I tried another one with the twisting on the leg method. And you can see this one is longer. I did the splice fairly seamlessly. So I did this one without scratching off the bark and it's, it's actually quite soft just because of all of the rubbing rubs off the bark. As opposed to this one that I did with the double twist. It's quite hard just because the bark's on it. I mean, I don't think the bark affects its usefulness as cordage, but if I wanted to make something like a necklace, then it might affect it. Then I scraped the bark off most of those branches just for making some jewelry. So I've got a bit of a thicker rope and a thinner rope. Um, and what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to take a lighter and just burn off all of these little bits. But I thought, um, since I'm not going to be using these two, let's do a strength test. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with the method, it means there's something wrong with me. And this will be the yarn, or the, th the thin stuff. Breaks. <sighs> and nope. No break there. No break there. Let's zoom in on some burning stuff. So if I get the necklace done before the time I edit this, which is likely because I take forever to edit videos these days, um, I will show that. Okay, that's it for today, folks. If you want to see a video of me teaching me myself how to weave cattails for the first time, you can click up here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, you can do that right here. And if you want to see some other random videos that the YouTube algorithm, the algorithm has chosen for me, you can click right there. And that's it. So long and happy nature nerding.